What's up, pod pals? It's your buddy, Adam, and you're checking out Podcasting Business School. This is the show where I teach podcasters how to love their show like a hobby, but build it like a business. And today, I've got one of my favorite pod pals that I met in the year 2021. Uh, Jerome Myers is in the house, and when we talk about building a business, this guy is building a business. He's building a brand. He's making a huge impact. Red pill, blue pill. He's the Morpheus of podcasting. Jerome, welcome <laughs> to the show. Man, butter voice. It's so good to be with you. I don't know what to do, man. Thanks for having me on. It's just such an honor. It's been like, I'm like, I, I don't want to ask Adam if I can be on this show. You reached out. I was like, I'm on Adam's show. Like that, man. <laughs> Well, it's cool because we met because you listened to the show and we did a podcast on yeah, it and we, we became friends and started collaborating. You're helping with my events. I'm helping with your events. And, you know, now we're, now we're pod pals, we're buddies and, and, uh, we text message each other, you know, funny things on, on occasion. And that's, that's what I do. That's how I show my friendship mainly is I try to make my friends laugh or I make fun of them. And I do both of those things with you. So I feel pretty good. Like we're pretty locked in now. Yeah, and we talk crypto. We talk crypto yeah. too. Yeah, I'm like, what's XRP at right now? What you got? Are you are you in the hole? Are you 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 liking those gains? Um, so yeah, it's not pretty Straight right now. Tank. Not pretty right now. So Jerome, I, I want to kick this off. Give people a little bit of the backstory, like with your real estate success and and why you decided to dip your toe in the waters of podcasting, and let's kind of build momentum from there. Man, thanks for that. I. It's funny you say real estate success because most of the time I feel like a failure. But yeah, I mean, I dropped out of corporate America back in 2016 and we built a small apartment portfolio and we help other people figure out how to do that. Because if you don't have a subscription business, then you probably don't have any predictable revenue in your life. And so we think a lot of people get it. Somebody needs a place to live. And it's better that I do that with an apartment building, which is actually set up to be rentals than doing it with houses, which a lot of people try to force into it. And so got really smart at that, started speaking around the country at different conferences and became known as the guy who does an unconventional way of putting deals together, which is called the joint venture model. And so think about a group of you and your buddies buying an apartment building together versus um, you putting a bunch of money into somebody else's deal and being totally hands off. I'm building businesses with friends and each deal has its own group of investors. Some people repeat and so on. But at the end of the day, I each apartment building is its own business. We have different owners in that business, different ownership splits. And we think it's a really great way for us to grow our wealth. And I started the podcasting thing because I didn't have the right network to do what I was doing, right? I didn't know all the people that I felt like I needed to know in order to be successful in the business. And there was also a void. I don't shy away from the conversation of diversity. And what I found was that the majority of people that had thought leadership platforms didn't look like me. In fact, none of them did. You won't find a guy with exposed tattoos and dreads anywhere talking <laughs> about buying apartment buildings. And I'm okay with that because if I can do it, I know a whole lot of other people can do it. And so the other piece of it outside of the external appearance was the way that the shows were positioned. And what, I've got two shows, but if I talk about the apartment one, since we've been talking about my real estate journey, the show that I have related to multifamily investing is called multifamily missteps. And so what I learned when I was getting into space is that everybody who went on the podcast was just beating their chest, right? I'm great. I make money on every deal. You should give me your money because I can make you more money. And then there was little old me with my little deal trying to actually figure out how to make the thing work. And I was falling on my face, just stumbling and tripping. And I was like, I'm incompetent. And then I got around other people who were doing the same business. Like, oh, I'm not incompetent. They are, but nobody's telling you about telling others about their mistakes. They just whisper about it in, you know, small rooms over a beer. And so I was like, how cool would it be if I got people from around the country to come in and tell their war stories? 
And so I bring them in and they tell me about the things that they messed up on with the idea that if you hear about it, you won't make the same mistake. And multifamily investors, apartment owners aren't in competition or if they end up being competitions for a very small amount of time. It's good for me. It's good for the guy down the street if we're both great operators because we'll both be able to continue the rent or raise the rent and reduce our expenses, which makes our property worth more money. And so what I found is the people who are truly doing operations, like really running their business, they were comfortable coming in and sharing those stories. And it got really interesting to all the folks who were in the space or wanting to get in the space because they got to see the real deal for what it took to be an apartment investor. It, it's a great show and everybody that listens knows I'm a real big fan of the the niche. Uh, I'm really committed to the, the pronunciation of niche this year. That's one of my new year's resolutions. Just say niche, not the other way because I'm from Indiana and all the, the stereotypes come out about this guy's a uh, uh, hillbilly. He calls it a niche. Um, so uh, I'm using the fancy pronunciation. So, I mean, it's a great niche and I love highlighting podcasters that are unafraid to dive into that, like multifamily, you know, uh, you know, apartment, you know, real estate investing. That's a niche right there. And I freaking love it. And I really, really love how you are parlaying that, like your community building and you're parlaying that with a great social media platform. You're big on LinkedIn. Your LinkedIn content is amazing and you're really going hard there. And now you've got this virtual summit experience it's not even a i hate to call it a virtual summit or an event it's an experience so let's talk about that game plan of like all right now we've got the podcasting piece we're pulling these people in my world we're creating interesting content now what are we doing with these speakers that are coming on my show but also with the listeners what opportunities are we giving them with this uh, experience that you're putting on for people interested in the space yeah so you know, we talk about your podcast being a business, right? You don't actually make money from your podcast, but by growing the listenership, you do a couple of things. One, you get really cool people to come on your show, which gives you access to them in a way that you probably couldn't get other any other way. And then two, you have a pool of people who are interested in that subject matter. And so if you have a product that is on that topic that you can monetize, I think you can start to create real income for yourself. And so the Mid-Atlantic Multifamily Investing Conference is happening February 18th through the 20th. And it's a virtual experience for people all over the world. We've got international speakers jumping on. Adam spoke at the last one in the fall, and I was waiting for it today because I got to know if he's going to help me out again this year. And <laughs> I am so thrilled because the people that come, come because they want to share their experience, especially from those on the multifamily investing side. We do some mindset stuff. We talk about some marketing and branding, and we, we navigate what I consider to be a really, really delicate situation. And why am I calling it delicate? Well, people think, well, I, I don't know how to make money outside of my job. So how do I actually do this? Like, you don't just go out and somebody rents your apartment building. That's one thing. You don't just go out and somebody gives you money to invest in a deal. That's something completely different. If you don't know either one of those people or they don't know you, which is probably more important, how are you actually going to grow? And so you stack all that up and, you know, Adam loves Instagram and Facebook for his social media. I'm a LinkedIn guy, mainly because my folks who are looking for business stuff are on LinkedIn. Yep. Podcasts is super important so I can be in their earbuds, as Adam calls it. And then, you know, we got this conference where we get people together. Eventually, this will be an in-person event, but we've run it virtually since we've just been playing with COVID since we started it. So this is the fourth iteration. And again, we get people from all over the country who have an interest in learning more about these private placement investment opportunities and the ways that they could potentially put it together. Okay. Let's talk about the experience that you're putting on. Like, okay, just... As one example, I've seen two of these now, and Jerome has this like movie thing happening where 
you feel like you're watching a movie and he's like jumping out of helicopters and then his next speaker like shows up as like the hero and he has like this this he has basically a trailer it's a trailer uh, that that happens at at all different points of the event and just ties it all in so that like you're part of an action movie can you explain like why you're doing this and the reaction i thought it was super creative and amazing but like what gave you that idea and talk about how you're pulling that off a little bit so i think it's super cool yeah yeah so i have full-time staff right i heard somebody say it earlier today we're all media companies right if we're going to use the power of the internet and so i've got people on staff that work only for our team and the goal here is to create a one of con one of a kind experience i don't want to be like every other conference right where you hop on zoom and you do the thing and then the next speaker comes up i'm not that dynamic of a speaker now if i hire adam to be the host of the conference i could get away with that but I'm not that good, right? I don't have the big voice. I don't have the other stuff. So what I felt like I needed to do was put people in a movie because here's the thing. People don't care how long the Star Wars movie is. They'll watch it because it's interesting. And so when, how can we give you these pops, these splashes of excitement to keep you engaged? Because my conference starts at 6 p.m. on a Friday night and goes till 10 10 30 that night then we get back up on saturday and we go from nine in the past we've gone from nine to nine right i don't put any breaks in so if it's you like need tony to go robbins to the potty, <laughs> yeah if you need to go to the potty go to the potty come on back you tell your significant other to bring the food in because you're binge watching this show right and we introduce the next episode which is some form of a video bringing on our next speaker and so when adam was there and i don't release these beforehand people know the theme but they don't know how it's going to show up for them and he shows up well i introduce him i give him his video and he comes on and he's got the biggest smile on his face he always smiles but he's got the biggest smile on his face like he's delighted at what just happened because he didn't know what to expect other than it was going to be cool and that's what people talk about. And then later on, because I really value my speaker's time, I send them a personalized gift, something that if they want, they can put on their wall or on their shelf or somewhere. Some of them don't want them. They throw them away, but that's OK. The point is we want to celebrate it. And so if I go all the way back last year in March, when we did it, the theme was crusading for generational wealth. And so we made everybody superheroes, right? We put, we Photoshopped their body onto some recognizable character's uh, body and we let them come in and share their story. And I think one of the coolest things outside of the conference was the experience of having a mother open up a box with her kids around, this, a box she didn't expect to get, and her kids saying, mommy is a superhero. And that came from an experience I had with my youngest daughter. Leah got her drone stuck in a tree and I figured out how to get it down. And she was like, daddy, you're a superhero. And I was like, every parent that is out here working extremely hard should experience something like that. Yeah. And so we ran with it. Uh, the last go around, uh, we had me get captured by agent smith and my buddy from kansas city busted me out of the hospital that they were holding me in and then flew me back on his private jet and we had this conversation and then at the very end of the conference we rolled credits and gave everybody their little name and my kids were in it it, it was really 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 exciting and when the camera was off, I was crying because of how much work actually went into producing that. And so, Adam, the whole idea here is education is great, but people want to be entertained yeah. or you have to entertain them while you educate them in order to hold their attention. So we're trying to be one of the best in the country at that. I mean, I, I got to vouch for you. Like, I think that's 100 percent true like i think you've achieved that just because 
I speak at a lot of stuff and I've never experienced anything like that. I'm like, that's why I'm like, I hate to even call it an event. This is an experience. Like you're a part of something. And then like, it just locks you in. Like I, I see these promos and I'm like, wait a second, this is, this is different. And then the, like the lead up into my thing, I'm like, I got to save Jerome. Jerome's in trouble. Uh, <laughs> and it kind of gets you all like fired up into it. And it's, it's extremely entertaining. And you know, me, I, I'm a big fan of, of, you know, connecting eyeball to eyeball to people in, in the virtual world. You know, everybody in 2020 and 2021, like gotta go virtual, gotta go virtual, but how do you stand out in the virtual world? And you're nailing that. And honestly, you know, you and I talk crypto and things like that. And with Web3 and the metaverse and all this, I'm like, I know who's going to kick ass in the metaverse. It's my boy, Jerome. Like he's going to be, ha he's going to have everybody with the the goggles on and we're going to be walking around like high-fiving with our, our crypto sneakers and stuff like that. I'm like, Jerome, I can't wait to see what you do in the metaverse. Uh, so just to, to put some pressure on you, put a, put a little, little no pressure on you. No pressure. Jerome will own the metaverse. Um, let, let's talk about the matrix. Is the Matrix yeah. the greatest movie ever? And have you seen the new one? I have not, so don't don't give me any like spoilers or anything. Yeah, so the Matrix was a documentary. I don't know if most people understand that. The, the Matrix was a documentary, the one that was released in 1999. I've watched that more than any other movie in my life. And yes, I have seen the Matrix, the one that came out on December 22nd. I put together an event around it where I brought in people from all over the country and paid for everything except for their travel and their lodging for them to come hang out with me just so that I had some people to go watch the movie with. Bought their movie tickets along with dinners and a bunch of other things and just celebrated kind of the year because 2021 I would think was a transformational year for a lot of folks. But yes, absolutely the greatest movie ever created. And the not because of all of the cool camera tricks, but the dialogue. This concept that in 1999, the concept was you can live in ignorant bliss, which is the blue pill, or you can take the red pill and live in truth and actually understand how programmed we actually are as a society. And I was like, oh, wow. And then in this one, they propose, and I'm not going to spoil anything for you. They propose that you don't actually have a choice because you know what you need to do. And when you know what you need to do, you have to, you have to do it. Right. Cause if you don't do it, then you're letting people down. You, there's a person, I, I you, you guys don't talk like this on podcasting business school, but I'm here. So I'm going <laughs> to do it. There's a person who's counting on you to do the thing that you were placed on this planet to do. And if you don't do it, you will keep them from fulfilling their destiny. So you know what you have to do. You just have the illusion of the fact that you have a choice on whether or not you do it. Morpheus. More, uh, Jerome Morpheus Myers is what just happened there. Red pill, blue pill. So if you guys ever see me, like in, in certain videos and stuff, I'm rocking some of his gear. It says, I took the red pill. And I love it, but he like you, you're creating a tribe around this. And if you go on LinkedIn and you follow Jerome Myers on LinkedIn, like you're going to see these highlight videos of all these people rocking their, I, I took the red pill shirts and sweatpants and thong underwear. You're in or, there. You know, what I got, I, I didn't, he hasn't sent me the thong underwear ones yet, but I'm, I'm going to be like, you know, I'll be the, the speedo model or whatever. Um, so like talk about that, like talk about, okay, you created the gear and like you, are creating this tribe of people that resonate with this message. Talk about that game plan. Yeah. So for the people who actually like the matrix movie, they think about life differently, right? It's a galvanizing concept. It's a, it's a radical idea. And once you embrace this, this ideology that you're more than a cog in the machine that you can, change the world you can do amazing and unbelievable things you realize that you're weird you realize that you're different and that you need to be around more people like you and so i just encourage people to raise their hand and say it with uh, with their shirt right i'm the guy that took the red pill okay you're different than all these other people you're my people and then there's not just a reference to the movie but there is a whole way of life tied to it and so we've got a model 
call the center life, but we we aka it as the red pill, and it, it's got six levels: self image, relationship, work, health, prosperity, and significance. And so those bottom three: self image, relationship, and health. And sorry, self image, relationship, and work. Those are where all your stress comes from, right? And so if you don't fix the stress, what happens is you start having the self-destructive habits that destroy your health. And so we work really hard in the nucleus so that you can focus on your health, get in a peak performance condition, which allows you to earn more. And you get your health before your prosperity, because if you get their prosperity before your health, you'll spend all your money trying to get your health back. And I don't like to see people yo-yo. I want to see them continue to progress. And then, you know, when you have that, prosperity, there's abundance. And out of that overflow, you have the ability to give, right? Time, talent, and treasures. And so that allows you to sow into other people's lives and eventually become what I call immortal, right? So one of the things, like if you take your two shows and you look at them face value, oh, multifamily missteps, real estate podcast, dream catchers, that's like an inspiration podcast. You think, oh, these are two separate lanes, but you you tie it together to me because your vehicle for living an alternative life or taking the red pill is through real estate investing. That's how you achieve financial freedom. That's how you live the lifestyle that you want to live. You're not working a nine to five. You're your own boss. You're in control of your own destiny. So I I, I totally see them. I saw them immediately. I'm like, this, this is his vehicle. Uh, so it totally makes sense. And I love the theme of dream catchers. And that's like where the whole, like the red pill branding and all that stuff, it flows through that. And we've had talks about, you know, you and I talk about like financial dependence and crypto and like early retirement and all these things that are, we're weird. Like that, that's for some reason, none of that is taught in school, like not even in college. You can't find a college course on like early retirement or crypto investing. Maybe you can now, I don't know, maybe that's coming or, or something like, I hope it is. But like, I love the education that you're bringing out there of people that are living in a little bit of a different against the grain, against the norm lifestyle. Um, and like, they're actually doing it. So you're building the tribe of the, the red pill takers. Whenever I take my, uh, I wear my shirt to the gym at the grocery, like people always comment hundred percent of the time, uh, that, that shirt, or if I wear my gear that says your mom subscribes to my podcast, then I get some laughs and people point and laugh, but like people are like red pill, blue pill, man, good job. Red pill. And like that, like high five and all that stuff. Uh, so it's pretty damn cool. But let's talk about, uh, dream catchers and how, now that you've got this momentum going and you're, you're doing this show, like what's, what's the game plan with that show as far as building a business, you know, obviously you're doing coaching out of that. What's your current strategy or game plan like business wise with that show? You know, Adam, for at least four years, I was scared to say I was a coach. I, I didn't want to introduce myself as a coach because everybody's a coach these days. I can coach you this and I can coach you that. And the fact of the matter is most of these folks don't have any real experience or a track record of delivering success. And so it wasn't until the last quarter of 2021 that I was comfortable introducing myself as a coach. And it just so happens that I'm one of the few coaches in the country that can help you with your mindset, but has deep expertise in project execution, as well as, you know, multifamily investing as a part of my core business. And so Dreamcatchers is all about telling the story of people who have exited the matrix. You know, your episode is one of the most popular ones on our channel and it's because you dropped so many jewels. And so I bring people on, not for them to beat their chest and talk about how great they are, but to give people an inside look into who the person actually is today. And then we go back to who they were and the, go on that journey of who they had to become, right? So that they could have the thing that they desired to have. I, I fully believe in the be, do, have model of, actually manifesting things into our world and you know i really dive into or help them unpack their story so that the listeners can pull out the tools the tips the techniques that they use to create the massive success that they have most people feel like after the episode when they come on with me that they went to therapy 
And I take it as the greatest compliment because the fact of the matter is when you go that deep into yourself, you have no choice but to give people tremendous value. Man. Yeah. And the show's awesome. Like it's, it's again, it's an experience. It does feel like therapy. Like we jammed out. We went pretty long with our episode. Like we, it was over we, an hour. Yeah. We, we got after it. And I think just for me, I don't get, that's a lot of stuff that I don't get to talk about because I'm stuck in the, like, let's talk about sales and let's talk about, you know, how to grow a show. And that's, that's what, that's what my show is about. So the opportunity to kind of nerd out a little bit and get a little weird and talk about some stuff that not a lot of people talk about, it was very refreshing. And it just kind of like allows you to get that, that, that little something, that little fire you've got inside you that you're really, really excited about that you rarely get to talk about. Now Jerome's got a platform. Now this next part, pod pals, I want you to, if you have thought about coaching, if you're thinking about coaching, I want you to dial in tight. If you've been, you know, if you're out there doing some biceps curls or walking your dog and, you know, let's tune back in here because Jerome does something that I picked up on immediately. He's already alluded to it a couple of times here, but if you want to stand out as a coach, if you want to get better results, you know, you can't argue with results. That's first thing. But if you want to stand out and as a coach in a busy space, I feel like it's critical to have a process, to have a journey, to have systems that are like, like processes that are named. All right. He already named one of them. Uh, but like, let's talk about that, Jerome. I feel like that makes you, that's how, you know, we talk about leveling up the virtual event experience. This is how you level up your coaching client experience is like, you're taking them on a journey from point A to point, whatever, but there are systems, there are names, there are processes. So it's not just like, Hey, pay me whatever per month and let's get on zoom. And what are you gonna talk about today? That's what everyone else does, not Jerome. So let's talk about your programs, processes, and how you structure a good coaching program. Yeah, and I I paid lots of money to refine my practice so that it was actually something that I would be proud of to walk people through. And so, Adam, what I will tell you is I don't spend a lot of time talking process with my clients until we get the result. And I point out to, we do a post-mortem and I point out to them, okay, so we were here when we did this and we were here when we did that. I'm guiding them along the way. But for me, I got to know exactly where they are in their journey. And so the first thing is we've got a two-call experience, two-call experience called the line design. And in that, I interview them for two hours. I get all of the data that lets us know exactly where they are right now. And then from there, I create a report and then I come back and I share my findings with them on a, the second call. And that at times goes longer than two hours. But the point here is we need to pinpoint exactly where you are. Everybody talks about where they want to go. But in order for your GPS to work, you got to know where you are. Yep. Right? The starting point is even more important than where you want to go when you're trying to get from one place to the next. And so we do that. And then once I report exactly where they are, I tell them what I see as the path to get from where they are to where they want to go. And so here are the roadblocks. Here is how you think about yourself. Here are here is what I think you are uniquely positioned on this planet to do. Right? It's a culmination of all your experiences because I think everything happens to you or for you, not to you. And so we get that. And then there's a decision point. Is this something that we continue on? Or do they exit and go do it with somebody else or decide that they don't actually want to experience it? Totally, that piece is totally up to them unless I see something during the call where I'm like, this isn't a problem that I get excited about helping you with. Then once we embark on the journey, we start with self-image, right? We're always going to start with self-image because we think you have to take the red pill. Change starts within and then it radiates out. Right. So we start working on ourselves. And the biggest thing that you can do when you're trying to get transformation is make a promise to yourself and then keep it and then do it again. That allows you to get the wins the fastest. Right. And when we get there and we start getting some momentum, then we start looking at our relationships. And the relationships are pretty simple, man. You have mutually beneficial relationships, you have relationships that are one way that can be reframed as mutually beneficial. And you have relationships that are one way that are always going to be one way. 
we immediately get rid of the one way relationships. We look at the ones that are not mutually beneficial and work on reframing them. If the people cooperate, then they can stay. If they don't, then they go. And then when we have this ecosystem where there are people pouring into our cup, instead of always drinking from our cup, we can start getting recharged. The majority of folks that I engage with, I call them apex performers, they are always filling everybody else's cup. You know, Adam, I think you're one of those folks where people come to you, your source, right? Uh, one of the things that I've heard you say on a podcast was, hey, plug into me. You can use my energy. You can use my confidence until you get what you need in order to go be successful on your own. And if you don't have the right support group around you, well, you end up empty, completely drained. It's just like your phone. And so the goal there is to get you in that ecosystem where you continuously recharge with the people that are around you. Then we move up to work. So what you'll see when your confidence is growing and the people around you have a greater level of respect for you. And mind you, a lot of us have this ego where we believe, well, if I ask somebody for something, they're not going to respect me. It's the exact opposite. If you have restrictions, if you have boundaries, people are more interested in respecting you because they know that you have standards for yourself. So then when we go to work, it's all about clarity around your mission, your purpose, and then being able, because you've done the self-image work, you can take that mask off and show up as you truly are. And that's going to attract people to you, which usually means that you're going to have greater responsibility. And with that responsibility, typically comes greater income. And you can look at yourself in the mirror and smile about the stuff that you're doing because in concept, you're making the world a better place. And those three things, again, create all your stress. And so for the things that are in there that you don't like, we figure out how to minimize or eliminate them depending on whether they're necessary or not. Then we move up to health, right? And so are, is your mind, body in peak condition? And if it's not, what habits can we interject into your life to get that raise, right? I, I track things like my rest and heart rate, my body fat, my overall weight. I don't use BMI because I'm an athletic guy or I used to be, and it's not a great measure for me. I'm morbidly obese last time I checked. So <laughs> it's just not happening, right? And I don't see myself getting down nice and lean like they want me to be. But I, I check those things. And even this year, I stepped it up and I'm doing measurements so that I know where I'm failing if I'm not taking care of myself. So, you know, that's just the physical measurements. But are you meditating? Are you journaling? Are you doing things to expand your mind? Are you reading? Like the inputs, right? The stuff that you put in your mouth, the things that you watch with your eyes and hear with your ears is what makes a difference in your life outside of the relationships that you have around you. And so I think it's really important that we are the gatekeeper for the things that come into us. If you do those four things, without a doubt, you'll make more money. You'll have more free time if that's what you want. And so that's level five. That's our prosperity level. And when people start learning how to turn that on, sometimes they get scared. I've watched a lot of people self-sabotage, right? It's like, oh, well, I don't need all that. I push it in a way instead of welcoming it and embracing it and being extremely excited that this opportunity came to them. And I call it money opportunity. I also call it a tool because that allows you to, if you don't need it, you can store it or you can disperse it into something that you want to see done that may not get done if you don't disperse your resource against it. And then the final level, and I think it's the only true success is significance. And so everybody at some point in their life looks to make a significance play. And I think about significance with three resources, time, talent, and treasure. And so you can give your time, talent, and treasure wherever you want if you have abundance of it. If you don't, then you can't. And so my thought there is, if for me, like my significance play, I just got an endowment report. So it's, it's fresh on my mind. So Back in 2007, 2008, I gave money to my alma mater to 
do a full engineering scholarship to a sophomore, junior, or senior who was had great grades and was going to be a leader by all traditional measures in academia. And so I got the report yesterday. There's over $300,000 in that account. They harvest money off of it every year and they pay the person's room and board and tuition. And they don't have to worry about graduating college and having debt. Well, that's going to be there when my kids go to the university. That's going to be there when the grandkids go there. For me, that's a significance place. Sure, I could put my name on a building, but the building's going to break down one day. This money is going to help somebody defray being in debt forever. Yeah. And that for me is huge. And, you know, everybody's got their thing that they're passionate about. For me, I didn't have to pay for school. I, My dad was a veteran, so he had a disabled veteran scholarship that I was able to get access to. And I played football. And so, like, I was able to get out of college without debt. And it was just transformational for my financial situation because I was able to buy a house earlier. I was able to do all these other things. And I watch people who are struggling with that debt. And I was like, well, this is something small that I can do for somebody who worked really hard. And so, you know, just running down through that, and I said a lot, Adam, but that's that's the framework. And I believe that coaching is holistic. I Sure, you can go talk to the person about this specialty. And I think there should be specialists. But, you know, I'm, I'm very much a generalist who connects people with specialists if it exceeds my capacity like their problem exceeds my capacity all right so i i just i know that the listeners brains are on fire right now because obviously everything you just said was amazing but like if you guys have listened to episode 220 of the show uh, where i talk about your podcasting uh, uh, success timeline and defining your client or customer or listener journey Look at what Jerome just did. Like he's got a framework. He can identify where his, his coaching clients are at, why they're at, where they're at, and how to get to the next step. It's like, you know, he played football growing up. I played football and basketball. And it's like, if you're a quarterback, you got, okay, if this happens, then I pass the other guy. But, or if that guy's open up, like there are options. It's if this, then that. And there's always a, a next step. He, just imagine how confident his clients are in him when he goes, oh, here's where you are. Okay, here's the thing that happened. Here's our reaction to that thing. It, like, he's always got an answer. 100% of the time, there's this like web of options back and forth. And talk about that, being able to stand out in a coaching space. Everybody's a damn coach. But if you Everybody. can go out there and just clearly define rock solid framework, like what Jerome just put together. And he didn't do this overnight, folks. Like, you got to put in work, understanding who you're trying to impact, and then adding your own experience, both you going through the journey yourself, but also as a coach, and then thicken it up, thicken it up. Like Jerome inspires the hell out of me with his frameworks you, man. because I'm like, all right, I got to thicken mine up a little bit because I th there could be some gaps in there. There could be some some places where I don't have that next answer. So like, think about that for everybody that's listening in. Like, do you have a framework? Do you can you define your ideal client or listener journey? And if not, let's get there. So maybe if they are in that position, Jerome, any thoughts on like where to start yeah. or like where to get the ball rolling on that thought process? Yeah. And just to help your listeners, right? Like I did it close to 750 coaching calls last year, right? So me being in the chair doing the work is part of it. So, you know, if you're getting started or you're early in a space or you got a couple of clients, you're not going to be sitting where I sit, right? And, you know, there's people on the other end of the spectrum who've done 25,000 hours of coaching. And so just know that, you know, you can't compare where you are to where I am. Everybody's got their own journey. But what I would say is there's a repeatable process by which you're able to achieve the outcome or deliver your promise. And as long as you know what your promise is, and as long as you know where your person is sitting right now, you can describe to them all of the feelings that they're going to experience because they are the same for each person. They may experience it in a different way, like they may manifest it differently, but they're going to be asking this question. For me, the people who come to me, they're asking, is this it? 
they're saying there has to be more to life than this. If they're saying those two things, they've already figured out how to make money. So basically they climb to the top of the ladder. They look and they're like, I don't want this. And so now they're trying to figure out where they go next. All right. Yeah, I know that feeling. This happened to me at this point. And I can talk about usually somebody who's in their industry, because most of the people I work with are female doctors and financial services professionals who experience exactly what you experience. And here's how we walk them down this path, because at the end of the day, everybody's looking for their life. Once they figure out how to make money, they're looking for their life to matter. Right. And not just matter generically, but matter from the standpoint of this is what I am uniquely qualified to do. And it doesn't matter how many other coaches there are out there. I'm the only person with this experience. So I can speak directly to that problem that you have. And once you're able to pull that out and put that down on paper, you can give them three to six steps. And Adam talks about this because I've been through his training the three to six steps that they're going to experience on their way to achieving the thing. And if you can pick out what are the kind of street signs, what are the landmarks that signal that they're in this space? And it can be words. It can be a feeling. Like I I was on with a client this morning and she was like, you know, people are looking at me differently now. They're like, okay, you mean business, huh, sis? And I was just like, yeah, you remember the turning point for that? It was when you decided that nobody was going to the, you weren't going to dress because dress a certain way because this person might see you and they might feel like it's appropriate. You're going to live in your full essence. You've worked hard. If you want to wear short shorts, you're going to wear short shorts. And I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, she's not ridiculous, but the point was she was hiding everything that she worked so hard to shape and cultivate because she was worried somebody might see it in a way that wasn't appropriate. And that's just not who she is as a person. So, and, you know, to add on top of that, she's decided that she's going to leave her job. We've, we've extracted her from the matrix. She's (laughs) created a business, right? And this is the same plan for me, right? If we keep going up steps. So she's got the health together, right? She's created a business that pays her more than she was getting paid when she was working full time, right? Why would she stay other than the thought of I need insurance or whatever else? And imagine what we'll be able to do when she like is off sabbatical and she doesn't have any ties to the organization anymore, how much we can crank that flywheel. And we talked about, you know, her ascension ladder, right? It's going from what she sells to this higher ticket thing which is higher value and then higher value and higher value with the smaller and smaller group as we go up that ladder. And, you know, it's the same model that's predictable for everybody. And oh yeah, by the way, all right, now she's got all this equity. Let's figure out how to pull some of that out and let's buy an income producing piece of real estate, particularly a multifamily asset so that that subscription model turns that equity into more cash flow, right? And we systematize the business and we keep doing that over and over again. And everybody that we work with, we do the same thing. If they have the problem of, I want my life to matter, I'm in this job that I don't enjoy, we figure out how to help them figure make money outside of their job. Then we scale that. Once we scale that, we help them create more income through passive investing in some form of real estate, grow that, and then... In concept, they can hire somebody to run their business. They have a property manager to manage their real estate. So they have that true freedom and abundance. And you keep turning it over and over again. And you just have to make sure that you understand the promise. My promise is that you're going to make more money and you'll enjoy your life more. That is super generic. But when I apply it against the doctor, I know what their common problems are. They work all the time. They don't feel valued. They feel like they're in the machine instead of actually being a healer, which is why they went in the business. And so they want to use their abilities to actually heal people. 
so how can we do that? And so like one of my clients like literally quit being a doctor so that she could practice alternative medicine wow. and help people do their thing. And she just completed her first challenge and she's thrilled. She made like $700 and she's like, this is awesome because it's the first money she's made outside of her job. Yeah. Now, yeah. when we turn on ads and we get her podcast pumping the way it's supposed to pump, she's going to have 70 people and she's going to make $70,000 and then she's going to have one-on-one -on -one clients. And then we'll slip the money into real estate because uniquely that's my expertise, right? I, I actually know how to evaluate and operate deals. And so some people come for that shiny object, but there's a whole process that leads them to the place where they're ready for that. I rambled, man. I'm sorry, dude. I'm just soaking it up. Uh, I love the way that you coach. I love the way that you structure everything. I love the impact that you're making. That's why, you know, every time we interact, we create stuff together, or we just chat on the phone or whatever, just talking, talking about whatever we want. I walk away. Like I just had a little bit of friend caffeine, you know, uh, you level me up a little bit. I got a little more mojo rolling out of that conversation. So um, Grateful, all right, all right, we, get, we got to get people plugged in, man. Let's, let's get people plugged into your world. And like, yeah. uh, let's, uh, I'll make sure we get this out before your event happens and all that stuff. So if people want to get a little bit more Jerome time, where do we go? Yeah. Jerome Myers.co is a place where you can go to find everything except for coaching, because I do not allow people to get into that world. Right. That requires some engagement. You got to spend some time listening to the podcast. You got to engage with my content on social media first. And that way you can see who I am and you can make a decision on whether or not I'm real. Right. That's the first thing is sky real. Um, so, you know, me, then you decide whether or not he's real and, and you can decide if you like me. And if you like me, eventually you come to the point where you trust me. And then at the point where you trust me, we can begin to have a conversation because that was the thing that I had a really difficult time with, Adam, is I assumed that everybody was out for my good because I just want to provide more value than I ever charge other people for. And I found that not to actually be the case. And I got taken advantage of a couple of times to the tunes of tens of thousands of dollars, right? And so I had to put up that defense shield because coaching is such an intimate thing, right? When I bring new people on, I tell them this, and it ends up being true for everybody who stays more than three months. I want to be the first or the second person you call when something amazing happens, or if you say, oh, shit, I don't know what to do. And if I'm in that category, then I'm doing my job because I'm here to always advocate for what's best for you. The thing about fixers is fixers always consider everybody else before they take care of themselves. And so somebody needs to be the voice to hold them accountable to that. And, you know, one of my clients, she negotiated this amazing deal. She stood to make half a million dollars for one transaction and they tried to retrade her. They tried to renegotiate it and cut her down to like 200,000. And I told her that if she did that, that our coaching relationship was over because she was being manipulated and she had a natural affinity to want to please people. And it was a life changing amount of money for her. And she would be doing herself a tremendous disservice if she went against guidance. She followed guidance. She got that money. She's able to pay off all kinds of things. She's able to buy her new home in cash. She's able to help her children with down payments for new homes and all these other things that she would have not been able to do because she let other people pressure her into doing something that wasn't in her best interest. And so I'm sure there are other people out there who are listening who are saying, man, I remember when that happened to me and you can tell yourself, oh, well, I got a moral victory and so on and so forth. But those opportunities only happen so many times. And let's be honest, the money only makes you more of who you are. So if you're a generous person, you having more money is only going to be for other people's benefit because now you get to direct where it goes versus somebody else telling you where to go. So I dropped that tidbit in there to say, man, you know, I'm really, really particular about the folks that I work with. 
they've got to be looking to impact tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or even millions of people like Adam. And I, I just love those apex performers who are able to kind of crush those stereotypes and break down boundaries and barriers so that other people can get access. I feel like that's his third podcast that he just invented there, the Apex Performer Podcast. Let's go, Jerome Podcast 3. You need some more things to do. Uh, oh, there it is. Sound effects. I got to get sound effects. Um, so you guys get plugged into Jerome's world. Take the red pill. Dive in and just you know chat him up on LinkedIn. Get it, Listen to his shows. You will not be disappointed. Jerome, I appreciate you so much, man. I appreciate what you're doing and how you're doing it. And I'm just glad that we're friends, man. So thanks so much. Adam, give give him give him the big voice, man. Come on, give him give him the trailer <laughs> for the next multifamily investing conference. I need it, man. Come on. I'm gonna cut okay. this thing off. That was funny. Like you were like <laughs> when you played, he played some like a, a preview thing and he goes we don't have audio adam just ad lib it and i'm like in a world where cats are taking over and like I, it's like there's just things popping on the screen and we had people dying so yeah that, that was pretty funny so all right pod pals we gave you a lot to think about a lot to take action on here today and as always like that that's the important thing we try to entertain you but if you don't take action on this then it is not going to impact your life so get out there Take some action. And as always, I'm going to send you out into the world wishing you health, happiness, and many downloads. We'll see you guys next time.